After what felt like an hour, I finally see my bike ride past the window of Triumph. And again, it comes back and stops right in front of the door. And the guy riding it looks pretty chuffed. So last year, I was able to get quite a few bikes to make videos with. We had the monstrosity that was the Yamaha Nikon. I got to kickstart my Aprilia career and my scooter career all with one bike. I even got to ride my very first Ducati. But by far the best dealership experience I had was with the Triumph Speed Twin. So how it usually worked was I'd be told what bike I was getting and when. But usually quite a lot of information was left out, like how long I would get the bike for. So I'd try to plan a video around these bikes that could be filmed in just one day. So that if I did have more days to film, I could expand on that, but if not, I'd still be okay. So on that Monday morning, I'd done all my research, I had my video planned that could be filmed in one day, and I headed off to Triumph on my R1. So I got to Triumph, walked in the door, and I was greeted by the friendliest lady I've ever met in a motorcycle dealership. She was very persuasive in offering me coffee, and although I tried to decline multiple times, because I did eventually remark on how much I liked coffee machines, I did end up having coffee. Eventually, a guy comes out with the Speed Twin, and I learned that I'll be able to keep it for three days. So I did tell them that I'd planned to be able to film the video in just one day, but if it didn't go to plan, like it often doesn't, I'll let them know later in the day and bring it back the following day. They were perfectly fine with me leaving my R1 there overnight or just for the day, but they did request the key so that they could put it into the workshop to keep it safe. Now, usually I'm pretty reluctant to give people the key to my bike, but I did want it safe and I'm pretty sure you can trust Triumph. So off I went to film this video on my new little Triumph and pretty much everything went wrong while filming that video. I got kicked out of my first location and the wind was horrific. You can actually hear it in the final video. And that is the reason I went and bought this microphone in the end, so that that never happens again. The bike was also nothing like I had pictured. I'd read all the reviews and thought I had a pretty good idea of what it was gonna be like, and it didn't tick any of those boxes. So suddenly the video that I had planned, or at least the voiceover part, wouldn't have been good at all or suited the bike. So I decided to head home, I'll keep the bike for another day, rewrite the script and replan the video, and we'll resume the next day. I got home and I sent Triumph a message just to let them know that I was gonna keep the bike for the night and that I'll bring it back the following morning. I started to go through some of the footage and review it when suddenly my phone rings. It wasn't a number that I recognized, but I did answer it, and it was the lady from Triumph that had given me coffee. So at first, I thought they were wondering where their Triumph was, but they weren't. She started to tell me that they were moving my bike inside when, and suddenly my mind starts to work out all the terrible outcomes that this could end in. Did they drop it? Did they take it for a joyride and crash it? Did they find something wrong with it and they're gonna tell me I'm a terrible R1 owner? And obviously this happens really quickly. But she starts to finish her sentence and she says, when they noticed that the head bearings were loose. Of course, I was aware of this. I even mentioned it in a hacks video when I found that the steering stem nut was loose and I showed you how to mark it because I wanted to know if it would come loose again. And my mind keeps going with all the possible outcomes. Is she gonna tell me I'm a terrible owner? Have I damaged it permanently? Why is she telling me this? But she finishes her sentence by saying, so one of the mechanics fixed it and they also pumped up my tires. So at the time I was pretty shocked. I didn't really know how to respond. So I just thanked her profusely and that was that. Now I was wondering, have they really fixed it properly or have they just done what I kept doing? tightening the nut and eventually it will work its way loose again. But if they had fixed it properly, I would be very appreciative. But messing with somebody's tire pressure, I'm not so sure how I feel about that. My tire pressure was low on purpose. But anyway, the next day I head off to finish filming the Triumph video with my revised plan. 
I finish up the shots fairly quickly and head off to take it back to Triumph, eager to see how my R1 is doing and what they've actually done to it. At Triumph, the lady I'd been dealing with was busy with a customer, so I didn't disturb her, but somebody else helped me and said that they would be bringing my R1 around soon and took the Triumph back. And it was actually somebody hugely passionate about Triumphs. Usually salesmen don't really know too much about bikes and they're not that keen to talk about them. But this guy was a real Triumph aficionado and I was able to ask him weird questions about Triumphs that he didn't hesitate to answer. After what felt like an hour, I finally see my bike ride past the window of Triumph. And again, it comes back and stops right in front of the door. And the guy riding it looks pretty chuffed. So this guy walks over to me and hands me the key to my bike. And I asked him, what did you do to it? Did you just tighten the steering stem nut like I always have? Or did you go a bit deeper? And he proceeds to tell me that one of the Triumph mechanics is an ex Yamaha mechanic and actually loves this generation of R1 and also has quite a bit of knowledge around it and also a few tools. So when he felt that there was play in the steering, he decided to take it apart and have a look at it. I was pretty sure that it was bearings that needed to be replaced, but he said the bearings were fine. It just needed to be tightened up from below the yoke. But again, I thanked him profusely and headed on my way. And sure enough, it felt like a brand new motorcycle. Suddenly it was sharper and stiffer and actually went in the direction you pointed it. Unfortunately, I could never figure out a way to incorporate this story into the Triumph video. But that is how Triumph fixed my Yamaha for free.